I'm not going crazy. I'm not falling apart. I'm holding it together. If you came to my apartment right now, you might say otherwise. My mom did. She just left. She's worried about me, she says. Worried I'm having a breakdown. Why would anyone want to spy on me, she asked. Why indeed, mom. I'm being unnecessarily cautious, she said. But she doesn't know. She doesn't know me, her own daughter. Doesn't know who I am or what I do. She doesn't know what I've seen. Who I've seen. The tape over my webcam isn't paranoia, mom. The blackout blinds aren't a sign that I'm losing it. The extra locks on the door are for my genuine safety. And you wonder why I have so much free time lately, mom? Well, I can't work, can I? I can't do the job I've never told you I do in the first place. I need to explain. If I'm going to use strangers on the internet as a sounding board, then I might as well be up front. I'm sorry. It doesn't come naturally to me. I'm not a bad person or a pathological liar. Hopefully, once you know me, you'll understand why I am the way I am. I'm a cam girl. Yes, my job is getting my boobs out on the internet for a whole bunch of men and a small handful of women. No, I haven't made a series of poor life choices. Yes, my daddy loved me. No, I don't hide it from my mom because I'm ashamed. I hide it from her because she wouldn't be able to hide it from dad. And even now, four years after his death, I don't want to break my father's heart by telling him that his little girl does porn. I could have just chosen not to do it. I could have got a normal job. I wasn't the smartest girl in my class, but I got by. But neither was I the most confident. And sharing my body, exposing my body, that has changed everything. So yes, I get my tits out daily and more besides. Strictly solo, VIP, hot, blonde, blue-eyed co-ed with, as one of my whales is fond of telling me, a wholesome girl next door charm. But make no mistake, I'm no Marsha Brady. I'm the girl your mama warned you about who will corrupt your innocence and break your heart. You'd never know it to look at me. Often I'm told that I look far too innocent to do porn. Well, yeah, that's why I made the top dollar when I was down to just my socks, doing things to myself that would make Miley blush. And I did it because I enjoy it. I love it, even. That's it. That's all. No tragic backstory, no drama, no good girl gone bad. The worst thing that's ever happened to me was when my dad died young. I'm still a very good girl. I can just be a good girl while fucking myself with a neon pink rabbit as men cheer me on in the chat room. Why not? It's my body. It makes me feel good about my body. It's only masturbation. Like I said, I love my job. Or at least I did. For the last week, I haven't really even been able to look at my cam. I haven't booted up the PC. As far as my clients know, I could be dead. And all because of one goddamn incident that ruined my unbroken track record of staying safe. And I can't even say it's my own damn fault. Okay, so make no mistake, I'm aware of the risks of being a cam girl. I'll be your submissive slut for the right price. Of course, some men are going to take it too far. My business isn't making them want me. Sometimes they want me too much. Become obsessed, believe they're in love. Some men wish me dead for the sole crime of being a young woman who's taken ownership of her own body and sexuality. <laughs> so I cover my tracks. Flawlessly. My digital paper trail is as secure as can be. These men can't find me. Can't track me down. I'm safe. I have my friends, other girls, and we look out for each other too. It's like one big, happy, naked, wet family. <laughs> but, uh... I don't think any of us could have stopped what happened. I don't think there's any way to be safe from someone who wants to protect you. I first noticed him in my chat room a couple of weeks back. I'm not sure how much longer than that he'd been lurking. I'd been having a lot of very lucrative sessions, so I kind of didn't care about the dudes who sit there in silence, never engaging or tipping. As a rule, we try to discourage this. Without tipping, dudes can't get access to gold shows, but they still get to ogle us between sessions, listening to the entertainment I provide for my paying clients, getting a glimpse of skin here and there. 
Nobody likes a leech, and normally we kick regular lurkers who don't get involved. But as I say, I had been making good money and I was feeling charitable. I noticed him around, but decided to leave him be for now. He was using the screen name Elegy56. On this particular day, a bunch of regulars were in chat and spirits were especially high. I had already done three gold shows, so I was glowing, for want of a better word. For the uninitiated, shows tend to end in a girl's orgasm. So yeah, coming three times and being paid hundreds of dollars to do so had put me in a good mood. And when I'm happy, my clients are happy. Mostly. Another fellow I'd never seen before had shown up in chat. Just a rando. I get a lot of them dropping by. Me and some of my regulars were having a pretty in-depth chat about music, so then this new guy, with the hilariously cringe name of SucksMyPeen92, in the middle of a debate on the merits of EDM, types out, I want to make love to your ass. <laughs> now this, with its bizarre formality and the inappropriate tenderness of the idea of making love to my ass, caused me to break down in a fit of giggles. Me and some of the regulars started to gently rib this guy, saying things like, I want to romantically ejaculate upon your breasts, or I wish for you to imbibe my seed, milady." Sucks my peen 92 took it all in good spirits, typing out LOL and then remarking that I did in fact have a great butt. Since this was a cam show and all, and I was hoping that maybe he appreciated my butt enough to pay to see me to do things to it, I gave the room a quick flash of the goods. Just a look at my behind, nothing I hadn't done a thousand times before in public chat. That's when LG56 spoke for the first time. Show the lady some fucking respect, you disgusting little boy, or I'll beat you within an inch of your life, he typed. The laughter died in my throat. Always one who had to ruin it. I have a zero tolerance policy for abuse and given his previous lack of interaction and the fact he'd never once tipped me, I kicked LG56 out of the room. Normally guys who hang out often will come back and apologize if I kick them. LG56 did not return that day and I wouldn't have thought anything about it if not for the fact that sucks my P96 pulled out of a private show citing the fact that angry guy had killed his boner. In fact, I had terrible luck for the rest of that day, failing to gain enough tips to begin another show, and I internally blamed LG56's little outburst for my misfortune. Not that I had any intention of doing anything about it, of course, I'm just explaining why I remembered his name when usually troublesome dudes come and go, and why I mentioned his name to my friend the next day. My friend, let's call her Sky, is an even more popular cam girl than I am. I've always said I'm exceptionally grateful to call her a buddy. We were Skyping before we started our shifts, sitting there in our t-shirts and panties, when I remarked that I hoped I had a better day than yesterday after that asshole broke my flow. Sky asked me to explain, and of course I did. When I mentioned LG56's name, she rolled her eyes. That dude is fucking trouble, Sky told me. Always in my chat, kicking off when a guy so much as says I have nice tits. Not sure what the hell he expects to be said to a cam girl. I laughed. Why not just ban him entirely? I tried, Sky explained, throwing up her hands in frustration. Somehow he manages to not just evade the ban, but delete it from the ban list entirely. Huh, that was weird. The site we use is incredibly secure, and any breaches of security were always reported to all of us girls in site-wide emails. I asked Skye if she'd reported it, and of course she had. I suspected he works for the site, she said, but they claim not. They've been looking into it for me for weeks now. All I can do is kick him whenever I notice he's snuck in, and hope he doesn't upset too many of the guys in the meantime. It sounds like you got off pretty lightly. He's normally incredibly abusive about it. I shuddered to think what Sky considered incredibly abusive if my experience had been LG56 at his most passive. It was time for my shift to start, and of course by now I was braced for LG56 to be there in my chat. Imagine my relief when he wasn't, and I was able to have an average, if not particularly noteworthy day of shows. After a day of fucking myself in all the usual ways, the creeper had basically gone from my mind. Not so when I opened my emails. There was a mail sent to my personal account from recipient LG56. I didn't quite consider the fact he'd sent it to an account I never associate with work or provide to clients, 
This realization only came a bit later. Maybe if I'd thought about this at the time, I would have been slightly prepared for how dangerous he'd become. It was the typical bullshit, honestly. Nothing even particularly notable for the first couple of paragraphs, in which he talked about how he didn't regard defending my honor, and that he imagined I was grateful even if I couldn't admit it, and that one day I'd understand. He said nothing about me kicking him. He knew I had, of course he did. He must have been used to it with Sky. It was typical gaslighting bullshit giving me an emotionally blackmailing way out to apologize to him and pretend it had all been one big mistake. I had no intention of even replying. In fact, I almost couldn't be bothered to read the rest of the email. I've learned to let go of my anger and annoyance at guys like this, and frankly, if you can't get pissed off at their stupidity, it's all rather boring. I'm so goddamn glad I did continue reading. Just one sentence, and it was enough to chill me to the bone. Please do not listen to anything your friend says about me. Skye is a dangerous girl and ungrateful. I tried to protect her while I looked for you. I know she told you bad things about me. You must know that I am a good man who only wants what's best for you. Don't listen to her. I considered the fact it might be some kind of prank, Sky and some of the other girls, until Sky completely lost her shit in response to the forwarded email. My other suspicion was a hack or keylogger of some kind on Sky's computer but it fucking chilled me when she pointed out that our conversation had been on Skype. As in, we were talking. Verbally. Needless to say, we both met up in our favorite coffee shop the next day, laptops in tow, ready to descend on our friend Chris, who's a bit of a tech wizard. Words like bugs and hidden cameras were being thrown around. Was it software or hardware? Was he even watching us through our computers? Or had he somehow planted a listening device in Sky's actual apartment? Chris persuaded us to leave our laptops with him. Despite the fact that it meant a couple of days off work, neither Sky or I were particularly sad about taking some time away from the cams. Our safety was paramount and our minds were running wild. Every time we tried to convince each other that there must be some rational, mundane explanation, we'd counter this with the more extreme possibilities. Bugged apartments, stalking, living in the goddamn walls. By the end of the evening, we painted LG-56 as such a terrifying, creepy monster that it barely even mattered that all he'd done is make sinister implications. To us, he'd abused the very core of our privacy and posed a risk unlike anything we'd ever dealt with before. Basically, it wasn't too hard for Skye to persuade me to stay the night with her in a hotel with a few good hours at a club beforehand just to make sure we slept well. The next day, still in the hotel room, Sky eating room service breakfast in the bed beside me, I checked my emails on my phone. I had a few to my work account from clients and regulars asking where I'd been yesterday because they, or their dicks, missed me. One confession of unrequited love from a man who couldn't even spell my name, and the usual horny impulse emails from guys telling me how they thought about my pussy whenever they came. Then, on my personal account, another from Elegy56. I will always protect you, was all it said. Attached were photographs, and viewing them caused me to begin shaking uncontrollably. Sky grabbed my arm and asked what was up. Silently, I handed the phone. They were photographs of us from the day before. Photos of us in the club, dancing, taken from all angles as if the photographer had been walking around us, snapping us close enough that we had to have seen him. I thought back to the night before. It was a haze of booze, sweat, and dancing. Everyone had their cell phones out, snapping selfies. That's how clubs are these days. He could have been anyone. But surely we would have noticed one guy taking so many photos of us. Shit, look at these two, Sky said. I looked. They appeared to be just another pair of photos of us dancing. I frowned, still trying to control my breathing. They were taken at the exact same time, from different angles, she said. I studied them. She was right. We hid out in the hotel room all day. We talked about going to the cops. Neither I nor Sky was keen. She had her own reasons for wanting to stay away from the cops. 
I figured that given no crime had happened and we had no proof, we hadn't just told this LG 56 guy we've been talking about him, or in fact who he was at all, the cops wouldn't take us seriously. Throw in the fact that we were both cam girls and no doubt in for a bunch of disapproving sighs from the country's finest lawmen, and it really wasn't an appealing prospect. As much as it sucked, we just had to hope Chris found something on our computers that explained everything. And by finding it, we could put a stop to our stalker's stalking. I'm not saying we made the right decision, or even a smart one. <sighs> but it is the decision we made. Of course, Chris found nothing on our computers. And the emails from Elegy continued. Photographs of me whenever I left the house. Nothing too close to home. Nothing I could use to convince the cops I was in danger. Pictures of me on the street, in the supermarket, in the library. One particularly lengthy series of photos showed me buying then eating a baguette, and one was accompanied with the caption, It's nice to see you dressed for once. Sky received no emails from Elegy. A week passed and nothing changed. Daily emails if I left the house, nothing if I didn't. I took to staying inside, talking to as few people as possible, only contacting Sky with a pay-as-you-go phone I had in the back of a drawer. Now, I'm very frugal with money, but not only that, and this is something I don't tell any of my cam girl colleagues, and perhaps the only thing in my life I am ashamed of. My family is very wealthy, and I, in turn, am very comfortably off. Some girls too born because they need the money, I don't. I could live comfortably off my savings for a few years without even having to get my vag out even once. But Sky can't. Her camming was profitable, but she had major student loan debts. I tried to help her out one time. It didn't go well. As such, she needed to go back to camming. Living in fear of elegy was taking its toll on her. It was a Friday night, last Friday. She needed to get back in the game, and so I promised to hang out in her chat, keep an eye out for Elegy. Two pairs are better than one, something I was told a lot when I insisted on only doing solo porn. Yeah, I shouldn't joke. Imagine my relief when there was no sign of our stalker. I hadn't left the house in three days, and his emails had dried up. Something told me this wasn't the end of it, and I knew that being a hermit was no solution, but for the short term, it was fine by me. Skye and I even had fun for a while. Her absence had left her clients especially thirsty and we played up to that. A lot of them knew me and appreciated when Skye and I would flirt. I even jokingly tipped her $100 and ended up watching her first show of the night. I was reminded again of why she was so popular. I almost forgot that I was keeping an eye out for Elegy. Almost. There was still no sign of him when Skye disappeared behind her paywall for her second show of the night. I sat there twiddling my thumbs, keeping an eye on the chat as I waited for her to finish giving her boys a show. My phone bleeped. A text from a number I vaguely recognized, but wasn't entered in my contacts. One sentence. It's not just men you need protecting from. A chill crept up my spine at the exact moment Sky's private show ended. I looked up at the screen, a wave of horror sweeping over me. Her bed was empty. Just a space where 15 minutes before, Sky had been preparing to get naked. In the chat, scores of men expressing their bemusement. What happened? Screen was just blank. Where you go, sexy? Show me your pussy. What the fuck happened? I typed, my heart pounding. I struggled to make sense of the horny, disappointed men. Finally, one guy was able to stop tugging his dick long enough to explain to me that as soon as the show had started, the screen had gone black and there had been no sign of Sky for the duration. This time, I called the cops. Sky had been right. Those fuckers didn't care. She was a whore with an outstanding warrant, according to the desk sergeant. She'd just skipped town. She was probably the one sending me the messages as some kind of prank. No crime had been committed. She hadn't been missing for long enough. She was an adult woman and clearly able to take care of herself. I saw the cop's eyes roaming over my body as I stood there, shivering in my hoodie and denim cutoffs, no makeup, my eyes red from crying. I knew what he was thinking. Was I one of those filthy sluts like my friend? Or maybe he knew, maybe he'd watched me, 
huffing and sweating in his string vest and wide fronts as he grabbed at his grimy dick, eyes penetrating every orifice that I stupidly, naively displayed to the world. Maybe I did need protecting. At home, I replied to LG56's text. It was the first time I offered him a response. Sky and I had decided that provoking him would be a bad idea. Not once did we ask him to stop. Now, I did. Where is she? I demanded via text. What have you done to my friend? I sent the message. I thought I heard a noise from my kitchen and I jumped, paused. Nothing. No reply to my text. The familiarity of the number was bugging me. I decided to call. If the fucker wouldn't text back, then maybe at least he wouldn't be able to resist listening to my voice, hearing the fear he caused in his quest to supposedly look after me. I called the number. Almost immediately, a bleeping sounded from my kitchen. My heart skipped a beat. That number. Of course I recognized it. I'd written it down for Sky on the back of a McDonald's napkin just the other day. It was the number of my old spare pay-as-you-go cell phone. <sighs> I left the apartment one more time to buy extra locks, blackout blinds, and a fuckload of duct tape. When I returned, I checked every single nook and cranny for anywhere that LG-56 might be hiding, even though a terrified, resigned part of me had already begun to accept that I'd never physically find him hiding anywhere. Apartment clear, I began to seal myself in. I covered every camera, unplugged every electronic device, blacked out the windows, secured the doors. Yet again, I was grateful to my father for teaching me DIY before he died, in lieu of the son he never had. I thought about my dad a lot in the days during which I gradually shut myself away. How proud he'd be now to see me protected from the world, keeping to myself, covering every bit of flesh. How he'd laugh and nod and pat me on the shoulder and say, See, didn't I tell you it was a bad idea to give them boys a look? Now I could let go of the sole guilt I held for doing porn, knowing how protective my father had been. How it would have killed him to know I was bearing it all for strangers, no matter how happy it made me. I remember how, when my first high school boyfriend came to our house, my father had given him a jovial warning, something about keeping the guns in the cabinet loaded, and how he'd whispered to me that he was serious, that if this boy did anything to hurt me, that I was to tell him immediately. How I longed for my dear, overbearing father in these final few days. How I longed to tell him he was right all along, that I did need protecting from the world. That men did only want one thing from me. The thought of everything I'd done, how vulnerable I'd made myself, was making me feel sick. All the comments from all the men were running through my mind. I began to hate each and every one of them. Everyone who told me I had great boobs, who'd asked me to finger my pussy, who'd complimented my cute legs, who'd informed me that they wanted to make love to my ass. Every comment felt like another layer of skin had been flayed away from my body, leaving only a raw, bare skeleton beneath. And under all that, I felt a deep sadness at the realization of what I'd lost, and how something that brought me such confidence had been turned into something disgusting, all by the suggestion that I needed protecting from the very people who worshipped me. <sighs> it's funny. Porn had appealed to me as a way to rebel against dad's overprotectiveness, and now a stranger's overprotectiveness had corrupted the same thing I had once loved. An omniscient, omnipresent stranger whose emails and texts had stopped, and whose presence I found myself almost missing. Mom must have been thinking about dad too, because she only visits me when she's sad about him. And she visited me today. Hence the criticism of my extreme paranoia and desire to protect myself. You're getting paranoid. You can't live your life wrapped in cotton wool. Remember how much your father used to worry about you? You'll end up just like him, she said. And we both winced at the double meaning. That final image of my dad, fully clothed in the bath, mom's hair dryer in the water next to him as I stood there in my prom dress, home by curfew like I'd promised tears welling up in my eyes as they met his glazed, dead stare. I haven't heard from Skye. Her roommate says she's always disappearing and not to worry. Her roommate seems more concerned about the rent than Skye's safety. 
I don't like Sky's roommate. Sky told me he gives her a discount on the rent if she lets him watch her shows through the door. I asked if she ever did more than that. She never answered. He's a dirty, slimy man, and I hated him from the moment I first visited Sky at home and could see the undisguised lust with which he regarded my body. I haven't heard from Chris in a bit either. He'd been texting to check how things were going with the stalker. A few days ago, his text stopped. I tried calling once or twice, but I'd just go straight through to voicemail. Chris has always had a crush on me. I've tried to feel the same way about him. He's a nice guy, I think. But I just don't feel it. One time, near Christmas, he broke down crying about how lonely he was and how hard it was being in love with me. I was drunk, and he talked me into giving him a blowjob to apologize for how bad he felt. I've never been entirely comfortable with him since. A man came earlier to deliver pizza. He glanced over my shoulder at the couch on which I performed my cam shows and gave me a knowing wink. I think he's watched me online. I watched him lick his yellowy teeth. He's old, as old as my dad was when he killed himself. His skin is greasy and he always has a zit on the side of his nose. I know he wants to fuck me doggy style. I've been thinking of switching pizza joints. But now, everything's okay. I'm alone, strictly solo, VIP, chase blonde, blue-eyed co-ed with, as my dad is fond of telling me, a wholesome girl next door charm. I can almost feel his arms around me as I prepare to expose myself to strangers one last time as my fingers drum this requiem, this elegy, to the man my father was and the girl I once became. I sit here in the darkness, sending this message out into the ether, clothed, covered, and more vulnerable than ever, saying here, here I am. I do need your protection. I need it after all. Come to me. Protect me. Save me from myself. Wrap your arms around me. Bury me in love.